There are two things Blizzard does every time there's an emergency in World of Warcraft. Number one is to nostalgia bait to make all of the boomers happy. And number two is to buff Paladin. To create balance, of course. Coincidentally, both of these things are happening in the 20th anniversary event in World of Warcraft, starting this week worldwide. That's right, in just one more year, WoW will be legally allowed to drink in most of the continental United States. The event will feature everything from classic raid bosses to a fresh coat of pixels on the iconic tier 2 armor sets. You'll even be able to buy chicken from Leroy Jenkins himself. But the reason you're here is because of the massive class reworks in the mix. Not to spoil too much, but Boonkins will have two charges of incarnation, and Blizzard is finally addressing button bloat on a few specs. So today, we're going to walk you through every new change coming, including our predictions for the new solo shuffle meta. First though, we need to talk about dragons. Drakthir will now be a playable race for more than just evokers, as hunters, rogues, priests, mages, warriors, and warlocks will now be able to select this race. When this was first announced a few months ago, people lost their minds, especially since the passive glide racial was actually much faster than running. Luckily, this was hit with a hotfix, and although Drakthir glide is still technically faster, it is nowhere near as broken. What this means is that Night Elf will still be the best race for most specs. As a fun fact this user posted on Reddit, there are more Night Elves above 1800 than all Horde races combined. If you're looking to play something new this patch, remember that WoW PvP is honestly a lot like cooking. And you don't want to be that guy getting flamed every lobby for doing zero damage. If you're sick of being hard stuck in Hell's Kitchen, we've rolled out brand new courses for the War Within at Skillcap.com. Every course is designed to get you the rating you deserve by teaching the fundamentals that actually carry, like damage rotations, burst sequences, openers, and more. And no matter what, we will back you up with a rating gain guarantee where we promise that you will see rating gains while actively using our website. So after this video, be sure to click the link below for an exclusive discount to get started. For now, back to the tier list. The melee meta is seeing some juicy changes, with Rhett Paladins, Enhancement Shamans, Survival Hunters, and Rogues all getting major reworks. The entire Paladin tree is getting a beefy redesign, which will affect Rhett and Holy, but more on that later. The theme of these changes is basically making every Paladin spec into a titanium armored tank. This includes getting the entire orc racial for free with a brand new passive called Stoicism, reducing stun durations by 20%, nerfed by half in PvP. Paladins are also getting a few new healing talents like Lightbearer, which will splash over 10% of all healing to nearby allies, and Inspired Guard, which increases healing taken while Divine Protection is active. Paladin CC is also getting some buffs, with the ability to now have Repentance on 0 CD, which basically means Pallies now have Polymorph. And if all of this wasn't enough, Paladins can even select a new end cap talent that allows them to bubble with Forbearance active, which will make those double pally lobbies a bit more forgiving. There's also a slew of mobility talents centered around Divine Steed, which could see some play. And to cap everything off, Reds are getting a 6% overall damage buff, which might seem minor, but it's nothing to scoff at. So the question remains, will Reds be broken? Tankiness really isn't the issue Rets are facing in Solo Shuffle, and more than anything, it's simply their lack of finishing power that has held them back. A 6% damage buff might not seem like a lot, but it's actually a big deal since it affects everything. Overall, Rhett will be a huge wild card. It is definitely moving up at least one tier, but could be Sleeper OP down the road. Enhancement Shaman is another spec to see a pretty significant rework. First up, a new talent was added to remove some button bloat, turning Ice Strike into a proc that replaces Frost Shock rather than being a unique attack. This helps address a pretty common complaint that Shamans are just way too overwhelming for beginners. Shamans are also seeing a redesign to their Stormbringer hero spec, which might become more popular for both Enhance and potentially Ellie. This includes a new choice talent called Lightning Conduit, which literally causes a lightning bolt to supercharge your movement speed for a few seconds, randomly, of course. Enhance is also getting a redesign to Doom Winds, which now autocasts Storm Strike to nearby targets, probably breaking CC, but hey, more damage! Anyway, Enhancement is seeing major improvements to three core problems. Button bloat, mobility, and finishing power will all be in a slightly better state. Honestly though, Enhancement Shaman will be hard to predict. It's a spec which needs to do broken damage in order to be high tier in solo shuffle. Just like Rhett Paladin, it will be a complete wild card. Hunters are seeing some class-wide redesigns, and we think survival will be going up half a tier. One key ability to see buffs was Butchery, which now hits 50% harder. Hunters will be doing more upfront AoE bursts with this ability, while also leaving a nasty dot on any nearby targets. 
Previously, Survival was having some CC break issues due to Grenade Juggler chucking damage at random targets, but this has also been addressed with a redesign. We will be covering this later, but both Marks and BM are seeing some nerfs to their main hero spec, and Big Mex is optimistic that Survival could become the best hunter spec in a competitive setting. Rogues are the last melee to see some significant changes, with Sub arguably changing the most. The infamous Vanish CDR talent called Invigorating Shadow Dust has been removed. This was arguably one of the most broken and honestly problematic talents in the game because it made Rogue cooldowns nearly impossible for add-ons to track properly. Rogues as a whole are also seeing a bit less button bloat, with Cut to the Chase now automatically granting Slice and Dice, which means you really don't ever need to press it. The rogue talent tree itself is getting a major rework, with Echoing Reprimand being reworked into a passive called Supercharger, which will allow rogues to, in theory, spend 10 blue combo points on a single finisher. For those of you who don't know what that means, it simply means bigger crits and very long dots. Overall, because Sub is seeing some potential increases to burst damage at the cost of losing CDR, we think it's a wash. The other two rogue specs will feel better with Outlaw probably being the biggest winner overall. This spec has not only seen play in the AWC, but has been trending on EU for quite a while. As a result, we think that Outlaw will be moving up at least one tier. Windwalker Monk is another spec to see a rework to their hero talents, with Shadow Pan getting a bit of a rework to make the damage of Flurry Strikes more telegraphed, but what really matters is a 20% buff to Blackout Kick. It's hard to say if this will be enough to bump Monk up to the S tier, and one thing that is complicating everything is that apparently there are still loads of bugs with Windwalker. For the meantime, we're going to keep Monks on the A plus tier, but they could wind up being higher. There were a few other melee to see less major changes, including Frost DK, who's getting a slight rework to their Deathbringer hero spec, getting some brand new choice nodes, and a small rework of Dark Talons. Does this solve Frosty K's problems? Definitely not, but it does represent more damage, at least on paper. The last melee to see significant change was Warrior, who got some rebalancing to their hero talents, but more importantly, Fury got a pretty big buff to Raging Blow and Bloodthirst damage. More damage is obviously good, but doesn't really address the key issues faced by this spec. Anyway, this is what we're predicting for the upcoming meta. Even though both Warrior specs technically got better, we think we overranked them last time, but should now feel solidly A tier. We've also moved Unholy DK down, as it has definitely fallen off in the meta and has seen a massive loss in popularity. The ranged DPS meta is where things really start to get spicy, with huge changes to Boomkins, Hunters, and Elemental Shamans. Boomkins are seeing a massive redesign to their spec tree, with some highlights including Starfall becoming baseline and a new choice node for Wild Mushroom which can make it proc off of Sunfire, sticking to the theme of removing Button Bloat. But what might be the most broken part of the redesign is Whirling Stars, a choice node talent that gives Incarnation two charges and a reduced CD at the cost of some duration. But who cares? Two charges of one of the best CDs in the game? That's absolutely nuts. Boomkins will still suffer some survivability issues, but we think this change alone is enough to bump the spec up at least half a tier. With any buffs to Frenzied Regen down the line, and with a slightly slower meta, we can definitely see Boomkin being S tier once again. Ellie Shaman is also quite interesting, as its rework provides a major buff to Ascendance, which now includes some bonus damage buffs to your mastery, and along with Ascendance continuing to offer 25% haste, this will now be one of the scariest cooldowns in Solo Shuffle. On top of this, Stormkeeper has moved its way up the tree, and with a rework to the Stormbringer hero spec, Elemental Shamans practicing the trending Lightning Bolt spec could have their efforts pay off. We still think the traditional lava play style will be better in most situations, but at least elemental shamans are getting more options. Overall, just like Balanced Druid, we think buffs to major cooldowns are a really big deal in Solo Shuffle, and we fully anticipate Ellie moving up at least half a tier. The last spec, or, well, last two specs to see changes, are both Marks and BM Hunters, who are getting a total redesign to the Dark Ranger hero spec. The TLDR of these changes is that Black Arrow is now just kill shot. If you're unhappy with these changes, you can safely blame Mythic Plus, where Black Arrow was a bit awkward to use since its benefits effectively end once the target dies. Luckily, Marks is likely impacted the least with these changes, since Sentinel was already pretty good and only marginally worse than Dark Ranger. So a simple respec will be enough to dodge the nerfs this time around. BM on the other hand will be hit by these nerfs quite a bit, since it seems like Pack Leader is still quite mid and Dark Ranger is still probably the play. On the bright side, the rework did add Murder of Crows to the hero spec, adding another dot to stack up your Basilisk Collar. Kind of a weird change, honestly, since Murder of Crows is also on the BM tree still. The continued problem with both specs is that they still have random stuff that breaks CC. 
Shadow Surge is a newly added hero talent that can randomly break traps, which still means that Diamond Ice is the play in most cases. Moving on, mages were supposed to get a stun this patch thanks to a rework to Gravity Lapse from the Sun Fury spec, until Blizzard said, just kidding, and turned it into a root instead. Anyway, all three mage hero specs are getting some reworks, but Frost is once again coming out on top. This is due to some more buffs to the Frost Fire hero spec, which is also a buff to fire, but disproportionately benefits Frost, since it is overall the better spec. The rich get richer, as they say. Anyway, after their buffs in the last few weeks, Frost is clearly in a league of its own and will be staying in the S tier. The patch is bringing a massive list of buffs to fire though, which unfortunately seem to be PvE focused, centered around Living Bomb, the spell that has died and resurrected so many times that it permanently has a soul stone. That leaves Arcane, who will once again be marginally better since it is getting some buffs to Spell Slinger on top of some minor talent reworks. These changes definitely help, but as we've said time and time again, Arcane is just structurally flawed. It is simply too easy to shut down and continues to have one of the most telegraphed win conditions in the game. Unless you are Cubsy or Vinruki, these changes don't really matter. That brings us to our predictions for the ranged meta in the coming weeks. We know that there were some minor changes to Evokers and Warlocks too that we did not cover, but they weren't really noteworthy compared to what we just discussed. On that note, we've readjusted our previous Affliction ranking, since its recent nerfs didn't seem that impactful. Anyway, with huge buffs to Boomkins and Elemental Shamans, it's clear that we are entering a ranged meta once again. A few healers got some mini reworks this time around, with Resto Druids, Mistweaver Monks, and ironically Holy Paladins coming out as big winners. Resto Druid has had a very slow start to the expansion so far. The biggest problems with the spec up until this point are that it lacks burst healing needed to tackle the fast paced meta while also getting punished by dispels, two problems which this patch directly addresses. The 05 changes includes a rework to their talent tree, with some key highlights being a second charge of nature's swiftness, some potential cooldown reduction on swift mend, a longer duration on scenario ward, and the return of an old tier set bonus from Dragonflight in the form of a brand new talent. All of these things help address the burst healing problem on paper, even if Blizzard decided to hit them all with some PvP modifiers. A bit unfortunate, but overall we would predict that Resto Druid will be at least marginally stronger. Considering it will now also have some built-in dispel protection, with reactive resin becoming a passive ability, turning purged hots into a stacking mini hot that counts towards mastery while also freeing up a potential PvP slot in the process. Anyway, with some core problems addressed and with more consistent healing output, we will be bumping Rest of Druid up half a tier. Mistweaver Monk is also seeing some massive structural changes, as Fist Weaving is now baseline. That's right, the good old Punch Monk spec is back in a fairly interesting way, as now you will be able to preserve the traditional caster playstyle while also being able to deal some damage. Part of what's new includes Jade Empowerment, which causes Thunder Focus T to make Jade Lightning hit for 800% harder, converting that damage to healing thanks to Ancient Teachings. Mistweaver Monks are also getting some quality of life improvements, including a reduced GCD on Zen Spheres, which helps free up some of their ramping problems. And finally, Monks are also getting some much needed passive dispel protection, once again freeing up a potential PvP talent. Despite getting a bunch of buffs, it will be hard to predict where Mistweaver lands. It will still be outclassed by Holy Paladin and Disc Priest for sure, and suffers some more structural problems, much like Enhancement Shaman. For now, we're going to treat it as a wild card. Now, as we mentioned earlier, all Paladin specs basically become Titanium Armored Tanks this patch. On top of benefiting from their Class Tree rework, Holy Paladins are also getting some healing buffs. If it wasn't obvious, they are staying on the S tier. The only other healer to get a meaningful buff was Resto Shaman, with reactive warding now causing Earth Shield to proc every two seconds, down from three. This is honestly a nice quality of life improvement, but doesn't affect their overall rankings. Resto is also seeing some minor changes to their Totemic Hero spec, but not enough to pull them away from Farseer. That brings us to our complete predictions for the upcoming healer meta. Despite not getting any changes, we are moving Holy Priest down a tier. It's clearly the worst healer in need of some massive buffs. While Zenlin may have had some success in the recent AWC Cups, the spec is just way too unforgiving in Solo Shuffle. Right now, every spec in the game is capable of reaching rival ratings, even if it means putting in a bit more effort. Healing is definitely not easy right now because damage is so stupidly high. If you aren't doing your rotation perfectly, you will struggle to climb. Last expansion alone, we helped thousands of healers just like you hit their rating goals, like Gizmo here, a Resto Druid hard stuck at rival with over 5,000 games played, who just gained over 
600 rating in a few weeks just by using skill cap. Our damage and healing courses save you weeks or even months of your time, condensing down everything you need to know into bite-sized videos. You don't have to be scared to sign up because we have a rank up guarantee that promises you will gain at least 400 rating while using our service. So if you are serious about climbing, visit the discount link below to get started. Anyway guys, we want to thank you all for watching, see you soon.